This time, scientists have stunned people with a truly terrifying find. Archaeologists have unearthed mass graves of people suffering from the plague. What these excavations may lead to, we will soon find out. About this find and more, see in this video. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. People in ancient times recycled old things. Garbage is generated daily, and still a huge part of it is sent to landfills. It seems that people have only recently learned to recycle at least some of the household waste, but this is not so. Past generations took care of things and tried not to throw anything away. And it's not just our grandparents. Scientists have found that even ancient people gave a second life to things. In 2000, scientists found the Qasim cave, which became a real sensation in the scientific community. The cave was able to preserve a lot of evidence of life here 200-400 thousand years ago. Traces of a fire, simple utensils, bones, and at first, Italian and Israeli archaeologists worked with the largest finds, but then they turned their attention to small pieces of stone, which were clearly tools. Tools such as chisels and side scrappers were so small that archaeologists had doubts that they were actually used. In order to find out the truth, the tools were examined several times in a variety of ways. For example, spectroscopy was carried out. And as a result, traces of skins, meat, plants were found on the once cutting surfaces. This led to the conclusion that the tools were actually used. But why were they so tiny? It is impossible, scientists say, that these tools were made from other larger tools. And when they become it is possible, scientists say, that these tools were made from other larger tools. And when they became unusable, they made new ones. At first, scientists thought that these were just fragments, but the analysis carried out proved that these were independent tools. The scientists concluded, the hominides realized that you cannot throw away the thing, but make a new one out of it and use it for smaller jobs. This allowed them, for example, to process the skin better, miniature tools developed fine motor skills, and men evolved. Secret Cities of the Amazon a whole network of lost ancient cities has been discovered in the Amazon. They were found using LIDAR technology, dubbed lasers in the sky. The technology has been adapted to monitor what is happening under the rainforest canopy. Cities built by the Kassarabe communities between 500-1400 BC are located in the forest of Llanos de Mojos in Bolivia and have been hidden for centuries under the dense canopy of trees. Many complex and intricate structures have been found in the cities, unlike any previously discovered in the region, including 7-meter-high terraces covering an area equivalent to 30 football fields and 30-meter-high conical pyramids. An international team of researchers from the UK and Germany also uncovered an extensive network of reservoirs, dams, and checkpoints stretching for miles. The discovery challenges the notion of the Amazon as a historically untouched landscape, the researchers say, showing it was home to early urbanism created and managed by indigenous peoples over millennia. There are monumental structures just a couple of kilometers apart, but they are connected by 1,000 kilometers of canals and dams bringing together reservoirs and lakes. Until the end of the 20th century, there was skepticism that the Amazon region could support anyone other than hunter-gatherer tribes. The Moxas Plains on the southwestern edge of the Amazon are flooded for several months of the year during the rainy season, making them unsuitable for permanent habitation. However, in recent decades, there has been evidence of irrigation, earthworks, large cities, dams and channels that often lead for many kilometers in a straight line through the savannas. Once the images are taken, the vegetation in the images is removed on a computer, and thus a digital model of the Earth's surface is created, which can also be displayed as a 3D image. During this process, two surprisingly large areas of 1.5 and, and 3 square kilometers were discovered with a dense four-level settlement system. It is not yet possible to estimate how many people lived in these cities. However, the layout of the settlement indicates that it was quite dense 
densely populated. The architectural layout of the large settlements of the Kassarabe culture indicates the inhabitants of this region created a new social and public landscape. The scale, monumentality, and labor involved in building civil and ceremonial buildings, water management infrastructure, and the spatial dispersal of settlements all differ from Andean cultures. The complex, interconnected settlements of southern Amazonia far exceed them in scale. Ancient Offensive Stone the discovery was made by a volunteer participating in the archaeological excavations. The stone was discovered near the English city of Haxum during the deciphering of ancient Roman inscriptions on the defensive Hadrian's Wall. The inscription, Secundinus Cacator, was carved on the stone in the 3rd century, which translates in English as Secundinus Sheta. Nearby was a painted penis. Latin epigraphers have noted that the Romans usually used the image of the phallus as a symbol of good luck or fertility. According to them, in this case, the penis increased the strength of the insult. A stone, 40 centimeters wide and 15 high, was found by former biochemist Dylan Herbert. He made the discovery at the end of his second week of volunteering at the dig. The author of the stone clearly had big problems with Secundius, since he was confident enough to publicly state his thoughts on the stone. I have no doubt that the Secundius was as surprised as we are when we saw the inscription while wandering around this place 1,700 years ago. According to experts, each card letter and penis, which took some time to complete, leave no doubt about the depth of the scribe's feelings. In total, a Hadrian's Wall, a defensive fortification that the Romans built in 122-128, they found 13 stones with phalluses carved on them. Remains of the Dancing Dragon Researchers from China discovered the remains of a feathered dinosaur previously unknown to science, which was called the Dancing Dragon. The creature lived on our planet about 120 million years ago. According to scientists, an interesting find will help shed light on the evolutionary gaps between dinosaurs and birds. A unique fossil of a flying dinosaur was discovered 10 years ago in the Chinese province of Liaoning, but it has only just been made public. During this time, Chinese scientists, together with American colleagues, studied the remains and concluded that the skeleton belongs to a dinosaur previously unknown to science. The new species was named Wolun Bohaensis, translated from Chinese as Dancing Dragon. The feathered dinosaur lived on the planet about 120 million years ago. Its fossils, including feathers and even soft tissue, are perfectly preserved for their age. It is about the size of an ordinary crow. The creature had a narrow, scaly head and a mouth full of sharp teeth. The dancing dragon fed on small mammals, lizards, birds, and fish. Its limbs, similar to bird wings, were covered with feathers, and two long feathers flaunted at the end of the thin tail. Despite the presence of wings, it did not fly like other similar types of feathered dinosaurs of this period. Scientists have determined that the fossil belongs to a very young male. At the time of death, he was about one year old. Chinese experts hope that the interesting find will help to study in more detail the period in which dinosaurs spread their wings and began to evolve into modern birds. King Arthur was or wasn't? Camelot Castle, Knights of the Round Table, Wizard Merlin, Excalibur Sword. Guess what it's about? The conversation will be about King Arthur, the legendary hero of medieval tales and novels, in which he appears as a just ruler, defender of honor, and the chivalric code. According to legend, King Arthur lived between the 5th and 6th centuries and was the leader of the Britons, who inhabited Britain. Tradition says that during the raid of the Anglo-Saxon Germanic tribes on the British Isles during the Great Migration of Nations, Arthur led the resistance, which repulsed the invaders. 
However, no modern historian can say with certainty whether this person actually existed. Scientists have repeatedly tried to attribute the legendary image of Arthur to one or another historical person, but all attempts have been unconvincing. The earliest references to King Arthur date back to the 9th century and tell of a leader, perhaps not even a king, who fought several battles with the Saxons. The accuracy of this evidence is questionable, and many researchers do not take it seriously. A little later, in the 12th century, the personality of King Arthur emerges in a cycle of medieval chivalric romances written in verse in northern France. But again, these novels are only a literary work, not a historical document. There are a number of monuments in Britain that are traditionally associated with the legend of King Arthur. For example, the now ruined castle of Tintagel, where the future king is believed to have been born. But during the archaeological excavations carried out at the site of the ruins of the castle, scientists did not find any evidence confirming the reality of the identity of King Arthur. Most likely, scientists will never know whether King Arthur was a real person or existed only in the imagination of people. Where is Cleopatra's tomb located? Cleopatra, or Cleopatra VII's Philopater, the last queen of Hellenistic Egypt. First of all, she is known for the dramatic love story for the Roman commander Mark Antony. When Egypt submitted to Rome, the queen committed suicide so as not to become a prisoner of the Roman emperor Octavian Augustus. Antony also committed suicide, only a little earlier than Cleopatra. Ancient historians claim that the servants buried the lovers together immediately after their death in 30 BC, in a tomb prepared for burial. The ancient Greek historian Plutarch wrote that the tomb of Cleopatra and Antony was located next to the temple of the Egyptian goddess Isis and was a majestic and beautiful monument, the interior decoration of which amazed the imagination. There was a huge amount of gold, silver, emeralds, pearls, a lot of ebony products and ivory. Whereas the tomb of the Egyptian queen and the Roman commander is still a mystery. In 2010, the former Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities of Egypt, Zahi Hoas, conducted excavations in the village of Tepoziris Magna, where high-ranking officials were buried in the time of Cleopatra. Although archaeologists then made many interesting discoveries, they failed to find the tomb of Cleopatra and Antony. The researchers note that even if the tomb of the queen has survived to this day, it could have suffered greatly at the hands of the robbers, in which case it would be very difficult to recognize it. 700-year-old ship Many years ago, sailing ships were the main means of transportation by which people traveled the world and, most importantly, they traded goods from one end to the other. Most of the ships that sailed the waters of the Earth ended up on the bottom of the oceans as a result of an attack by enemy forces or natural disasters. Only a few well-preserved ships are kept in naval museums, while most rest on the ocean floor. An interesting archaeological find occurred during construction work in Tallinn, Estonia. While the workers were digging the ground for the foundation of a new building, they discovered a 25-meter-long vessel, believed to be a 13th-century Hanseatic ship. The ship was found at a depth of 1.5 meters underground near the port of Tallinn, near the former mouth of the Hegepea River, a waterway that no longer exists. The ship's hull was found to be almost intact and very well preserved in the ground compared to other similar ships discovered in the past. Archaeologist Michael Tammet analyzed the wood for dendrochronology, and the results show that the wreck dates back to 1298. According to historical data, Despite the unusual location where the wreck was discovered, in the 18th century this place was still underwater, and only at the beginning of the 20th century was it converted for infrastructure development. The place itself is quite close to the port of Tallinn. In 2008, another similar wreck was discovered just 50 meters from this place. The ship was assigned to the Hanseatic community, a powerful trading network that stretched from England to Russia. In the 13th century, this trading network was perhaps one of the largest economic powers in the world, trading in goods and luxury goods. The ships that made up this network were built to last hundreds of years and withstand countless storms. Cold Dragon 
While examining the fossilized remains of a creature found in the Canadian province of Alberta, London-based paleontologists have discovered a previously unknown creature, dubbed Cryodraken Boreas, called Dragon. With a wingspan of up to 10 meters and a weight of 250 kilograms, the species has proven to be one of the largest flying animals in history. It belongs to the Ashdarkidae family, a pterosaur species often confused with pterodactyls, and lived during the Cretaceous period about 77 million years ago. The cold dragon had a wingspan of up to 10 meters and weighed about 250 kilograms, making it one of the largest flying reptiles in history. Dinosaur remains, parts of wings, legs, ribs, neck vertebrae, were discovered 30 years ago in Canada, but paleontologists have assumed all this time that they belong to the already known species of Pterothor, Quetzalcoatlus Northropi, discovered in Texas. Most of the skeleton belongs to a young reptile with a wingspan of about 5 meters, but one large neck bone belonging to an older individual suggests that the adult animal had a wingspan of up to 10 meters. Cold dragons were carnivorous and preyed on small animals, lizards, mammals, and baby dinosaurs. Unlike most groups of pterosaurs, Ashdarkadids are generally considered animals that have been adapted to inland habitats despite their ability to cross oceans. Remains of Crea Drake and Boreas include parts of wings, legs, ribs, neck vertebrae of two different individuals. Despite the large size of the body and the distribution of these reptiles in North and South America, Asia, Africa, and Europe, scientists were able to find only fragmentary remains of a few species of Ashdakadids. However, the remains of a new species of pterosaur are perfectly preserved and therefore are of value to paleontologists. Plague Cemetery on Pushkinska Street in Rostov, Russia, archaeologists have unearthed the largest necropolis. Rostov residents were buried on it during the plague pandemic from 1770 to 1772. Historians are sure this is an archaeological sensation. Archaeologists have already excavated 25 graves and discovered about a hundred skeletons. Most of the dead were buried with whole families, which speaks of the plague epidemic raging in this region. The first human bones in this area were found by workers at the end of April. Having learned about these finds, a group of archaeologists began excavations and came to stunning results. The found ancient cemetery is on the preserved maps. Most likely, these are the so-called mortgage dead, that is, those who died in unnatural death. They were buried away from the fortress. At that time, there were about 10 cemeteries on the territory of Rostow. Despite the danger of contracting the plague, the dead were not escorted on their last journey anyhow. The bodies are carefully and evenly laid. In many graves, their children were placed at the feet of women. Ancient silver coins were also found in the tombs. Thus, the dead hoped to find a new and happy life in another world. The terrible plague that moved down people in the 18th century doesn't pose a danger to humans today. After all, 250 years have passed. In any case, I would not recommend historians to dig up the mass graves of people who had the plague. But I strongly recommend that you subscribe to our channel and always be aware of new archaeological finds. Leave your kind comments below the video. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!